Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Today I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of the chap. Well, what I just fired is a Swiss Peabody. This was the last foreign ordered uh, firearm that the uh, infantry had. It was intended for the artillery troops um, as a stopgap before the Vetterli was fully up and running. Uh, now, originally they're rimfire. So what I've done here is I've got a, a block from a Spanish Peabody so centre fire, which just happens to drop in without any uh, modifications. Uh, what else is there to say about it? Well, obviously if you don't know the Peabody, it's a tilting block system. And there's a floating firing pin there. Um, and it uses a conventional percussion side lock to strike the firing pin and fire. There are two major variants of the Swiss system. This one is a unaltered version with its original American produced barrel. And it's rounded all the way to the, to the top. It has three groove rifling and I can't remember exactly the date, but they rebarreled some of them to the identical barrel on the Vetterli. You can easily tell that because it has a long octagonal section uh, on which the rear sight is mounted. They also modified the breech block very slightly. Um, I don't exactly know why. I think to uh, make the striker, so to ensure a more consistent ignition. Um, whether it's strictly necessary, I don't know, but they did. So, there we go. The ammunition is 10.4 uh, by 32R. Uh, center fire. 38R, surely? Uh, I can't remember. It chambers both. The chambers, most of the 10.4 uh, cartridge rifles except both. I usually use 30, um, 42 lengths because it, uh, you've got more metal to grip the bullet. So yeah, there we go. I'm going to shoot some more. So what load is this? This is 45 grains of Swiss number two. So Will it wait? Um, pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bullets are so, they're all oxidized because I bought these years ago, literally. Uh, they sat in a tub and um, that's it. <laughs> they're sized down to three, uh, 429, I believe. Um, if you have one of these, whether it's Peabody or the Vetterli, uh, highly recommend that you slug the bore before you buy any moulds because the tolerances are fast.
Okay, now we've finished shooting. Um, I'll take it back to the workshop and then I can show you the differences between the two breech blocks. So, welcome back to the workshop. As promised, I'm just going to take a little look at the different breech blocks for the Peabody. What I have here is the original Swiss breech block. So, as you can see, rim fire with a floating pin. And there it is. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but you can see the modification. Here they put in dovetailed a block in and then secured it with a cross pin. The original uh, firing pin went straight down without this block here and the pin ended with a rounded tip. Um, it obviously seems they had some ignition trouble with it so they went to a say, sharper or pointier firing pin. So that's how that one would work. Right, so now we'll take a look at the center fire block. Now disassembly is very very easy. First things first, raise the block, then remove the axis screw. And then you simply drop the breech. And out it slides. So as you can see, it's identical. Even the scoops. And of course, center fire rim fire. But the center fire one has a bit of an awkward shaped wiring pin in there. A bit clumsy, but uh, it does the job. And there's a little biasing spring there to reset something which the rimfire version doesn't have. Now i just got to put this back in. Going to need three fingers. At least. There we go. And now, um, just to show you the compatibility, I'll put the rimfire one back in. Whoops. Now this one, to put it in, it's quite simple, but you need to fight against this enormous spring. So you've got to put it in, I hope you can see this all right, and you've got to get the screw ready to shove through the minute it's in place. So you've got to put downwards and backwards force on the spring and lever down like so. And you can see there, it's just right. You push it in as far as you can and then screw it in. Don't lift the block up until the axis is fully engaged on both sides. So, there we go. See? Functions just perfect. Thanks for watching. Like our Facebook, like and subscribe, Black on the Range, and uh, see you next time.